I'm here in the Tucson Desert at the Taconomy Conference, and I'm with Mark Anderson from the Strate Strategic News Service, which is a, one of the great newsletters about the technology business. Also runs his own conference, the Fire Conference, which is coming up on what, what, what number? May 21. Will, which will be, how many have you done? 11. 11. 11. Um, also a great, a great technology conference. But we're talking today about something a, a little bit different, um, a really special project that, uh, that Mark is involved with um, that's going to address uh, global warming. Tell us about the project. Yes, so uh, tomorrow we're uh, opening a uh, fundraiser for the film Chasing Ice, which is just opened in New York. Mm -hmm. It's a great film. I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful film, won the Cinematography Award in Sundance uh, last winter, and the idea is that this uh, brave guy um, has gone around the world, placed 27 cameras, they're time-lapse cameras, shooting every half hour of all the major glaciers in the north and watching them recede. And when you see this, any thoughts you have that are text-based about doubt, uh, around global warming go away. The, the simple picture of mm -hmm. the ice melting is enough. So that's the film. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, we're going to reissue an SNS uh, newsletter from a few months ago in which we proposed something kind of new. Probably it's been done before uh, in text, but we're going to try to make this actually come to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is, we call it twinning. Imagine every coal plant and every petrofired energy plant, instead of putting CO2 into the air, the CO2 becomes a feedstock for something valuable. So instead of being a waste product, it's now got a commercial value. So we're going to capture all the carbon dioxide. 100%. And, we're, and that's going to be something, it's going to be a useful thing yes. rather than a waste product. Exactly. And we're going to funnel it into something else. That's right. And when that something else is what? So here's the, the, if there's a beauty part to this whole story, on the left hand you have the energy cycle, and on the right hand you have the material cycle, all the things that we build mm -hmm. today. It's only by linking these two that the magic works. Separately, we can't solve these problems properly. But if we link them, it turns out we can make a raw material that can be used to build almost everything you think of. And that raw material is called graphene. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as it sounds. It is like the graphite in a pencil. Mm -hmm. It is, but it, this is flat, flat sheets of carbon, two-dimensional carbon. Mm -hmm. It can be used to make airplanes, clothing, buildings, cars, paints, chemicals, literally everything you can think of with a few exceptions. And what else, what are, the, what are, are there other feedstocks you need to no. build the material? It's just, no. just carbon dioxide. Just carbon dioxide. And the waste product, you'll love this, is oxygen. Is oxygen. So we're going to throw oxygen into we're the atmosphere. We're going to throw oxygen into the atmosphere and see so, what happens. So, is this, just, so, so, so let's talk about a couple aspects of this. So is there proof of concept here that this process uh, works? And then the second question, of course, is, is there proof that someone wants this material? Because, of course, you need the economics to work. Right. Great questions. Um, so we actually didn't know that there was proof of concept when we wrote the newsletter, mm -hmm. which we now call the report. Uh, in fact, because of it, I got this phone call about a month and a half ago from John Myers, CEO of Graphene Technologies. So mm -hmm. we now know that there is at least one company in the world that has already done this. Mm -hmm. And they have a patented system, uses a catalyst, which allows them to be cost effective in, in providing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it works. And they've got a pilot plant up running in Novato, California. Mm -hmm. And they, they're doing this stuff on a daily basis. So uh, yes, it can be done. He's making flakes. Little flakes, they're almost like nano flakes. So it comes in a can, it looks like a powder, mm -hmm. and you can pour it into anything you want cement, paint, you know, and it provides stronger than steel strength, mm -hmm. properly bonded to that material. So has he found customers for his? He's working production? on that right is now. That's his big challenge right now, is right. finding customers. I mean, one of the benefits of this conversation we're having is people will say, oh, if it's dollars a pound, which mm -hmm. I believe is going to be the number, it's unbelievably cheap, mm -hmm. and I can make something that's stronger than steel, I should do that. And the, the, the beauty part to me of all this is not only do we solve the global warming issue, mm -hmm. it, it allows people who make coal and oil and natural gas to get on the economic side of global warming s solutions. They'll make money from this. So the ideal thing would be to allow them to invest in these twinned plants on their mm -hmm. own property and make part of the profit back. So they really see an economic benefit of creating CO2 instead of this horrible PR nightmare they're facing. Right. A retrograde argument that there's no such thing as water. So, so I, d I have seen one other attempt at doing this where you use, uh, use CO2 as a feedstock for doing things like um, uh, algae uh, yes. growth. Right. Um, so, uh, algae there's works a, great. There's doesn't scale as well. But doesn't scale as well. There's it requires huge amounts of area. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the proper amount of sunlight and all these things. So uh, the reason we picked graphene is because I don't care if it's cloudy or sunny. And it just, you know, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. You can put it right there. It's condensed. It's a small footprint. Mm -hmm. And you can produce as much of this stuff as you want. Have you gotten any sense <laughs> of interest from 
the utility industry that you know that is on the one you know the one half of this uh, problem. I'm sure they would love to solve their you know PR problems on being able to use uh, uh, you know use uh, fossil fuels to produce power and then have it uh, be cleaner. We literally haven't had time to do that yet. This is very early days in this project. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I did ask one question of, of John Myers, who runs this company. Mm -hmm. If we got a plant for you tomorrow morning, a, a full-on coal-fired, dirty power plant tomorrow right. morning, could you scale up right away and take 100% of the CO2? And the answer was, I can do it tomorrow. So I'm sure he's exaggerating slightly, right. but, but basically he's ready to go. So you know, I, I think there's no trouble finding customers because there are so many potential uses for this and because mm -hmm. the price seems to be right. The, the, the chemical characteristics and physics of it are obviously right. And it's not hard to picture, a, a, you know, a 10 years from now, 20 years from now, where anybody who wants to build a power plant would automatically include a manufacturing plant next door. So we, we really need to move from a time in human history where we've been resource exhausters. We, we take, through mining or through other techniques, all that we can of something until we drive the price beyond use mm -hmm. and we switch to the next thing. But we can't keep doing that. You know, there, there's going to be a really obvious limit to that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be 100 years from now, but it's right. coming right up. Right. And so this is a good time for us to go, how about the other idea? What if we had a material, so you get tired of that coat or, or, or shirt, you throw it in the shredder, and it becomes a boat. That's a good thing. Right. Or a car or an airplane. Right. This would be just like that.